Hey right, guys, we are we're now returning. This is section eight, uh, World War II. This is the part two series. Now we're going to jump off exactly into how America fought back. One of the first things that America will do is in April the eighteenth, nineteen forty-two. There was called Doolittle's Raid. If any of y'all ever saw the movie uh, Pearl Harbor, that's about Doolittle's Raid. What we did was the Americans. Basically, took some B-24 bombers, they flew them off aircraft carriers, and they hit Tokyo. Uh, that was done pretty soon right after the uh, war had started. That had never been done before. Uh, it caught the Japanese completely off guard. Uh, the Japanese learned really quick that these Americans will do crazy stuff. Uh, I mean... No other army in the world, guys, would have taken a bomber and tried to fly it off aircraft carrier. Uh, I really encourage you to go to YouTube. You can actually watch that. Uh, it's on YouTube. But that was when America will strike back. The next big turning point will be at the Coral Sea in Midway. Uh, this is very important, guys. The Japanese army had planned, or the Navy had planned, to go ahead. We only had just a the U.S. only had just a slight Navy left, okay? Two aircraft carriers had survived that initial Pearl Harbor attack. So what the Japanese wanted to do was they wanted to trap us and they wanted to destroy us. And that was what they had planned on doing. They were going to do that at a place called Midway. Now, the interesting thing about Midway is we knew where the Japanese were at. We knew what time they would be there. And we were totally prepared. The reason we had done that is we had broken the Japanese code. Uh, the untold story of World War II, guys, is the story of the code breakers. And let me tell you something. The person who broke that code worked for the United States Naval Department, and it was a female. Uh, it was a little bitty girl that had been hired uh, as a code breaker. And there were a lot of code breakers out there. Uh, there is a book, if you're interested in this kind of stuff, called Code Girls, C-O-D-E, Code Girls. And it is about the code breakers of World War II, which the majority of them were women, not men. Uh, so, yes, we broke that code. We were very successful. And instead of the Japanese trapping and uh, destroying us, we basically destroyed the Japanese. Uh, so it uh, Midway is a big turning point. Uh, there's now a movie out there about Midway. Uh, and I wish I had more time to tell you about Midway, guys. But one of the biggest successes of Midway will be the group of pilots. The initial group that comes in, uh, what happens is, guys, the Japanese aircraft carriers are loaded up with weapons and aircraft. And they don't have time to take all these bombs off the decks of their aircraft carriers when the U.S. comes. The first wave of U.S. dive bombers, and these were, they flew a plane called Navy Hellcats, and these things were something else. Uh, a Navy Hellcat uh, was basically a, a plane that had a big bomb on the bottom of it, and these guys would take it and go straight down. Uh, I always like to point out your average age of your pilot in War II was about 19 or 20 years old. First wave of these guys almost all get killed. It's the second wave that gets them. And the untold story was it was a group of guys that had got turned around. They were a little bit behind time. And when they got there, they were running late. And they already knew, and they were really high. And the Japanese did not expect a second wave. These guys will be very successful. And within literally minutes, the United States will destroy the Japanese Navy at Midway. Uh, that's always a cool story to tell. But if you look at your PowerPoint, I've got some Navy bombers. Uh, those are pretty cool. Uh, George Bush, George H. Bush will be a pilot for the U.S. Navy in World War II. Uh, so they, these, were some, these were some pretty cool guys. Uh, so the Coral Sea victories will be very important. And we'll end this up, guys, with talking about island hopping. Now, what happened is we needed to get close enough to inland Japan to invade it, okay? This was before the era. Today, we have planes that can fly all around the world. Guys, the B-17s, that was the bomber of its day. The B-29, which was the predecessor of that, they could only fly so much. They could only fly so much because we had to have fuel. 
So in order to do that, we would have to go from island to island to island, and we would have to build an air base at each island. We would go to the next island, we'd build an air base, because we're getting a little bit closer to the mainland of Japan. That's what we want to do. We want to get close enough to Tokyo that we can then send bombers out and bomb and prepare for the invasion. Guys, and I wish I had more time, I've got maybe 45 seconds to a minute. Island hopping, it was some of the most brutalist fighting the United States Army or the Marines ever conducted. Uh, guys, these Japanese were well dug in. They were not there to surrender. They were not there to take prisoners. Uh, the Japanese soldier was there to kill as many U.S. as they could. Uh, they will hand to hand fighting in the Pacific theater will be some of the most brutalist ever. Uh, there was a guy named Stephen Ambrose. It was a famous historian. He lived down in Baton Rouge. He interviewed all these guys that fought in the Pacific. And he said, these men are not scared to die and to go to hell because they've all been to hell. Uh, Hacksaw Ridge is a good movie to watch if you want to get what was going on, guys. Uh, the Marines eventually uh, would just take just 50-gallon drums of gasoline. They would pour the gasoline into the caves where the Japanese were underground, and they would burn them alive, and to their horror, the Japanese soldiers would come out fighting. Uh, there was massive suicide amongst the Japanese civilians. Uh, usually when we came into these islands, uh, women and children would jump off cliffs to kill themselves. Uh, military intelligence later on found out that the Japanese military had told their civilians, this is propaganda, that in order to be a United States Marine, that you had to uh, kill your parents and rape your sister. Uh, so they were deathly scared of the Marines. The Marines will get the nickname the Devil Dogs. That was given by the Japanese. Uh, but as brutal as the Japanese soldier was, the American was just as brutal by the end of this, guys. Uh, some of the uh, war crimes that occurred, I guess you'd say, are almost unspeakable. But you have to remember, guys, we fought a Japanese army who had been in China. That's the same group of guys that were having beheading contests. That's the same group of guys that would take young ladies into the auditorium and have a raping contest. The Japanese soldier was a brutal soldier. He was a veteran. He had been killing for a long time, and this was not his first rodeo. So when these U.S. Marines go into these islands, the guys they're fighting are veteran Japanese soldiers that have fought and killed. They know how to kill. They know how to fight. They were a well-trained machine, and on top of all that, they were prepared to die. Uh, they, you have to remember, guys, they never thought that they could defend these islands from the Americans. Their game plan was to kill as many Americans as they could. They're going to be very successful in that, guys. Uh, a lot of U.S. soldiers will lose their lives. Some of these islands, you'll have casualties close to uh, 30,000 Marines will die. And it will be some of the brutalest hand-to-hand -hand fighting the American soldier has ever seen. If any of you guys ever go to the United States Marine Corps boot camp, the Marine Corps is very proud of the Pacific Theater and very proud of the Marines who fought against the Japanese uh, because they showed valor and bravery uh, surpassed in any military. Uh, I mean, what these guys went through was just terrible. All right, we will conclude this. We now will jump overseas back to what's going on in Europe because we're fighting both wars. All right, guys, this will conclude the second session, and we will start the third here momentarily. <laughs>